right. Uh, the next topic we want to talk about is uh, a little bit uh, that we have to adjust whenever we deal with units and angular velocity. Uh, because one of the really common ones you see is not in radians per second, even though radians per second will be our standard, it's the SI unit for angular velocity. But a really, really common unit that you end up seeing for angular velocity is called RPM, revolutions per minute. And so uh, I give a unit conversion for you in your notes. If you got 1250 RPM, then to end up converting that, RPM means revolutions divided by minutes, just like radians per second is radians over seconds. So in order to do the unit conversion, you have to change from revolutions to radians. So remember around the circle, it's two pi radians, right? Total to go all the way around. So it's two pi radians per revolution and one minute per 60 seconds. So you multiply those together and for 1250 RPM, you get 131 uh, radians per second. I, again, sorry for the, the interruption on uh, on the cell phone. Uh, the uh, So one other thing to remember, uh, so uh, revolutions can also relate to degrees. So one time all the way around is 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is the same as two pi radians, is the same as one revolution. So if you were given a problem that involved degrees, then in general you'll have you'll want to convert that to radians. So again, we have to have consistent angle units. Uh, in, for example, if you had a problem where all of your angle units were in revolutions, you have to make sure all of them are. But if all of them were in revolutions, you can do you can use revolutions. You don't have to use radians. If everything I've never seen this in a real problem, but if everything was in degrees, you could keep degrees all the way through, but you can't have radians in one term and revolutions in another. You've got to have them consistent. Same sort of thing we've had with matching up units before. So again, it's nothing new, although it is something that's not a pure unit. I mean, it's meters divided by meters in all of these cases, uh, but, that, uh, but bear in mind uh, what we will use as sort of our standard is radians. But again, bear in mind, if you have a problem where it is convenient to do so, there is nothing wrong with keeping all of your angles as revolutions or keeping, in principle, all of your angles in degrees. But you can't mix them up. Okay. So I end up giving an example. And so we suppose we've got a DVD and that little well, uh, we uh, was playing with a DVD the other day. So if you have a DVD uh, that, and we'll end up considering a one of them that would end up having a life of uh, two hours and 15 minutes, go from beginning to end. So uh, in this situation, that the way a DVD player will work, it will spin around the middle first, then it will work its way slowly toward the outside. Uh, so at the beginning, it ends up uh, having a higher angular velocity than it is at the end. So it covers basic because it's the same amount of distance because it, it's the way that it's encoded is how much you have in a particular little bit of distance. So you have along the outside it takes longer because the distance around is bigger on the outside than it is on the inside so it spins faster when it's on the inside, slower on the outside. So the uh, it's not perfectly uniform change in angular velocity, but for the purposes of the problem, we'll end up doing this. And these are not necessarily real numbers. These are numbers I picked out of the air. But let's suppose that in this process, it went from 48 RPM to 31 RPM to find your angular acceleration. That uh, the trick here is we know my initial angular velocity. We know my final angular velocity. We know our time, so one of our angular now big four is on the list I gave you, it's the third one. You have your final angular velocity equals your initial angular velocity plus alpha delta t. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha delta t. Uh, and by the way, I mean, you're not going to be, you know, we're, we're 
you're not going to end up giving me voice stuff very often in this. You know, so students like to say it's a W for an omega. As long as you're able to keep it, con you know, keep it consistent, it doesn't honestly matter a whole lot. But you know, if you end up needing this in physics too, and you know, you're saying this is W, they're going to say, "What the hell did the the uh, Mr. C tell you?" But it is it is angular velocity of omega. But anyway, uh, so that. I gave you uh, just the example worked out. So you convert your angular velocities to radians per second, same way as that sample I gave you before. Uh, your time is just your total time. So two hours, you convert to seconds, you convert 15 minutes and you add them up. So you get 8,100 seconds. And then you end up computing what your angular acceleration is. And again, it should make sense because your angular velocity was faster before, slower afters afterwards so that your angular acceleration is going to be negative. It's, it's slowing down the rotation as it ends up going up. So that's where you end up getting that value from. And so that's why it's negative. And it's a tiny number because it takes two hours plus, right, to go from 48 RPM to 31. And that's from 3.3 roughly radians per second to 5.0. So not a lot of change in angular velocity and a long time so uh, so again that number uh, ends up making sense uh, including its sign and then we'll end up talking a little bit more about angular uh, kinematics in the next